I'd like to welcome in the founder of Environmental Education Awareness Research Support and Services, Frank Alligator Rob with the best facial hair I've seen all day. Frank, thank you so much for your time. First of all, what kinds of things can be hiding in the water besides debris? Well, it depends on where you're at. If you're coastal, you have to worry about everything from uh, stingrays to alligators. Uh, you know, depends if you're in South Florida, you gotta think about crocodiles, snakes. Uh, of course, probably better things to worry about, but it's definitely something to keep, uh, be aware of and keep on your mind. All right, so, so how serious can this threat be? Because we see a lot of people, you know, when we're looking at the video in the aftermath, we see a lot of people walking around. How serious is this threat potentially? It's no more serious than normal if you're paying attention to your surroundings and using a little bit of common sense. Uh, obviously, if it's not water you can see through, you probably shouldn't be wading through it. If you know you have the local wildlife in your area, it's something to maybe carry. If you have to walk through it, carry a walking stick, something to put ahead of front in, in front of you to feel where you're going. Again, a lot of a lot of times, just a little bit of common sense fixes a lot of things. And this may uh, be an obvious answer here, but what is the most common call that you get, Frank? Uh, last night, I had a couple of couple of calls of snakes in houses. Um, just looking for a dry spot. Who knows, they could have been there all along and they just showed up since the people were awake all night. Um, when things start getting wet, you know, when it comes to uh, to snakes, usually they go to a higher ground. With alligators, they're typically in culverts or areas underneath neighborhoods and the floodwaters flood them out. So then maybe you see them more often than you did before because the areas they were in are now flooded. So they're out kind of exploring new areas the same way the people are. You know, and as we look at this video, Frank, I mean, we see all of this flood water. We see water up to, you know, cars, side view mirrors there. We can see that, you know, any apartment on the first floor there certainly took on water. What is your advice to people in the areas that are dealing with all of this flood water and all of the things, the extras that come along with that flood water? It's always the things you can't see, you know, that, that should worry you when you're dealing with microscopic organisms and bacteria. Those are the things to be really concerned about. Wildlife is gonna be wildlife no matter what. The last thing they wanna do is have an interaction with you. Again, it's the, it's, it's the bacteria, um, pathogens, things of that nature that should really be on people's mind. And you shouldn't be waiting around the water barefoot. That should be a, a, a common sense thing again. And if you can be out of the water, you definitely don't wanna be in the water. That's. Uh, it's a, it's a chemical hazard for sure. Absolutely. Well, Frank, before we let you go, I'm hoping that you will share with us a situation uh, that surprised even you, somebody who deals with this and works with this every single day. Yeah, it was uh, our last hurricane last year. I helped a lady get an alligator out of her house. Um, it, was a, it was a call that came through and she was a hoarder. So it was a house that was full uh, all the way up. I remember it took three or four hours to get to where the alligator was at and then clear a path and to get the animal back out. So you just, when it comes to wildlife things, you never know what you're gonna see. It's always, there's always curveballs thrown in there. And where was that alligator and how big was it? That was a 10 footer in Titusville. Um, oh it was during, during the hurricane, she'd walked outside to have a cigarette and left her door open and the, her whole yard was flooded. And she walked outside to have a cigarette and a 10 foot alligator walked in? In the middle of a hurricane, yes ma'am. Wow. All right, and you, and you got it out safely. We all have our priorities, I guess, right? <laughs> good point, good point. Uh, Frank Alligator Rob, you're doing great work down there. Very important work, because I got to say, if there was a 10-foot alligator in my house, you would be the first person I called. I'm not handling that. Uh, thank you so much, sir, for your time. Honored to be here, ma'am. Thank you. Thanks for watching. Go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your screen. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.